Hello, in this video, I'll be discussing IBM Voice Gateway working with Robotic Process Automation, or RPA. So why is RPA of interest to Voice Gateway users? Well, Voice Gateway allows our customers to talk to Watson Conversation, and that's a good start. But the real value is unlocked when we connect Voice Gateway to our other systems. In the previous videos, we connected Voice Gateway to a quotation service running in a rule engine to provide a life insurance quote over the phone. So during the conversation, we were able to provide an indicative cost for the life insurance. Now we'll be using more of the capabilities in IBM's digital business automation platform to do so much more. As well as the business rules, which we saw previously, we can now use Business Process Manager, BPM, and RPA. We can use BPM to coordinate the process of creating the policy and to provide human workflow, doing the traditional system-to-system -system integration, like reading from a database, BPM will give us visibility of this work, provide us with MI, as well as providing error handling for our robotic tasks. Then we can use RPA to integrate with almost any system through its existing GUI, just like a human would, so we don't have to build complex integrations or change these systems at all. Just about every business has old legacy apps that don't have APIs or store data in desktop databases or spreadsheets. RPA and the wider DBA platform makes all of this accessible to our voice or SMS solutions delivered through Voice Gateway. So what is an RPA robot? Think about a physical robot designed to perform repetitive physical tasks. Well, a software robot performs repetitive software tasks, such as logging into different systems, navigating through screens to get data, uh, and moving data from one system to another. So RPA allows us to automate mundane, repetitive tasks so our employees can focus on higher value activities. RPA is used to create software bots that mimic humans interacting with multiple software applications to execute tasks at the user interface level. It's able to do this without changing the existing applications at all. Automating these tasks will also reduce the number of errors encountered compared to doing them manually. Getting these mundane tasks into RPA means that we can also scale more effectively. We haven't got to hire new employees if we suddenly encounter a huge surge in workload. We can just increase the number of bots that are operating. Let's use a typical account opening process as an example of how RPA can be applied. Without RPA, the account opening process starts with a human capturing the customer details and progresses through a set of human and system tasks. With RPA, we're able to automate some of the simple tasks. This reduces the time taken to complete the work and reduces the number of errors. In this example, creating the account, activating the account and updating the account were automated by RPA bots. Okay, so that's enough of the theory. Let's take a look at how we've expanded the existing demonstrator to include RPA. Now, this demonstrator was built through three videos that exist already. If you haven't seen those and have just stumbled upon this, have a look for IBM Support TV on YouTube. And if you have a look at the playlists, there should be a voice gateway. And in here, there should be IBM um, three videos. The first one, which is an introduction to voice gateway with service orchestration. Um, and then we build out the infrastructure in part two, and then we do some of the coding in part three. So. Have a look for those first. If you haven't seen anything to do with Voice Gateway, have a look at part one. Okay, so let's go into conversation and see the changes there first. Okay, let's start with the dialogue. In the previous incarnation of this dialogue, once we'd delivered the quote, that was us pretty much done. Um, you'll recall that the system would read out this text, your quote is, quote, um, and we replaced this placeholder text with the actual value that we got from the business rule system, the quotation engine. Now what we've done is we've extended this dialogue with a few child nodes. so. After we've provided the quote, we ask the customer if they want to proceed or not. And if they do, um, we ask them a further question to see if they're an existing customer. 
Now, if they are an existing customer, we need to get their account number. And we'll take their account number off them using the keypad. So we'll be using the DTMF tones. And we do that in Voice Gateway by using some of these commands in conversation. We will pause the speech to text processing. We'll turn on DTMF processing and we will play this text. Please enter your account number followed by the hash key. Once we've got the account number, we'll be back into conversation and we'll acknowledge the account number. So we will reactivate the speech to text processing and we'll play the customer some text. We'll say, thanks, I've got all of that and I'm preparing your policy. So we've had to make some upgrades to the service orchestration engine. Now, previously this service orchestration engine or SOE was responsible for receiving the uh, speech to text output, passing it through conversation and then doing some processing before it was passed over to uh, text to speech and back out to the customer over voice. Um, it would check for some flags and if necessary, it would go down this branch here to um, obtain a quotation from ODM. Now in the conversation dialogue nodes, I've added a couple of additional flags to indicate that we've collected the account number through DTMF and that we're ready to create the policy. So if that happens, we'll take this branch here and we'll jump down to this prepare login node. What's happening here is that we are calling BPM. Now we're using BPM to orchestrate the creation of the policy, retrieve data from a backend system and call a couple of bots. Now we could be doing that through node red. We could be calling the RPA APIs directly, um, but BPM provides that layer of orchestration visibility, we can do human workflow from BPM, we can handle the errors, and we can do the traditional system to system integration in which in this case is retrieving some data from a database. So BPM is providing the orchestration of the policy creation. So what we do here is we, we log into BPM and then we pass over the payload of data that we've collected from the customer into BPM for further processing. Okay, so let's have a look at the BPM process so you can understand what's going on during the demo. And this is our process in the uh, workflow designer. And the process is split into a number of swim lanes and each lane represents a particular actor. Um, so our story starts here when voice gateway triggers this start event. So the process kicks off here. The first thing that BPM does, it determines if this is an existing customer and if so, goes and gets some customer details from a cloud database. Uh, following that, it triggers a robotic task to update the customer details on Salesforce. And this will be happening uh, asynchronously while the process continues. Um, we then have some logic that determines if there's some human activity needed uh, because of the value. And so this will create a human task in the, the workflow tool. Um, once that's done, we will send an email to notify the customer. We will create the policy and our backend system. And then we've got another robotic task, which updates an Excel spreadsheet with some um, marketing preferences for new business. So that's the overall process in BPM. Uh, so let's see that running. Okay, so I've logged into the BPM platform and on this screen we will see any human tasks that are created um, as a result of creating the policy. And what we've got here is a view of the desktop of the machine on which the, the robots that will be used as part of that policy creation uh, will run. So when we phone into Voice Gateway and complete the quote as Voice Gateway triggers the BPM process, we should see some human tasks start and also some robotic uh, activity here. So let's give that a call. Hello and welcome to Watson Insurance. How can I help you today? Give me a quotation. 
Before I can give you a quote, I need to know a few things about you. Let's begin with your age. Forty-five. How much cover do you need? Fifty thousand pounds. Are you male or female? Male. Your quote is seventy-four pounds and twenty-five pence. Would you like to go ahead with the policy? Yes. Do you have an account with us already? Yes. Please enter your account number, followed by the hash key. Thanks. I've got all that, and I'm preparing your policy. Okay, so now I see some human tasks appearing, and we can see that the the robots are starting. Okay, so let's just recap what happened there. We triggered the creation, or rather, we triggered the start of the process here from Voice Gateway. Uh, BPM then retrieved some data from a cloud and database. We saw this robotic task start. This was the Salesforce um, login as the system went off to update the customer records. And then we also saw in the BPM workflow tool, this human task was also created. Um, so that's kind of where we'd got to with the BPM demo. Now, as I said before, the, there's no reason why some of these robotic activities can't be triggered directly from Voice Gateway. It just makes sense in the context of a larger overall process where we might have some human workflow to do them within BPM. But if we just needed to call one bot, let's say check the stock levels of a particular product, um, we could do that directly from Voice Gateway. So that's about it for this video. Um, the next video will, will be a little bit more technical in nature, and we'll be looking at the handling of DTMF tones in Voice Gateway. Um, we'll look at starting a BPM process from our service orchestration engine, and we'll also look at integrating with RPA robots directly in Voice Gateway. Until then, thank you for your attention.